um, competing in a global trade environment. What does global mean? It means international. Uh, I, I was saying that all the brands surrounding us, um, many of them are not local, but they are global. They are international brands that come from other countries and that do business in different countries. OK, so we have a flow of goods, money, labor, services and information, which are these four here. These five things um, when you send uh, products, when you send goods across the borders, you expect money to be coming from the opposite direction. Now, how did this become possible? This became possible because of the advancement in technology. So now we can be connected with a factory in China or with a brand in Europe or with, you know, different businesses around the world very much, much easier than before. Thanks to uh, the uh, ICT development, uh, the technology. Also, social networks is producing a greater interconnectedness because of the social network, like the social media networks, the social media platforms, people are connected. So now we can see when there is a new brand in France, we can see easily there's a new restaurant uh, in, a, in, a, in a certain country, not like uh, 40 years ago where you weren't really able to see all of those unless you travel there. OK, so these two reasons have increased this global uh, connection between, uh, between uh, the countries. So one manifestation of the global economy is international trade. We have international trade, tijara al right? This is why this reading refers to the global trade environment. So examples here include Colombia selling coffee and Russia selling gas worldwide. Saudi Arabia sells gas and oil. Uh, maybe Germany sells cars, Brazil sells coffee and so on. So countries have specialties of the things that they uh, that they have and they do. Uh, so we have uh, competition uh, between countries here. Uh, countries do compete. So just like organizations compete on making profit, also countries compete in selling their products to other customers, which are other countries. OK, so why do countries have a comparative uh, comparative advantage? Why do countries have a certain advantage over others? Because those countries uh, were uh, given a certain trait, a certain thing that they are very good at. OK, so let's give some examples here. Where would you like to buy your car from? Which country? Germany? Fashion? Yes. Which country do you buy fashion? Paris, yes. OK, uh, uh, a watch. Switzerland, chocolate. Switzerland or Belgium, right? Coffee? Colombia? Brazil. So you see those countries have a comparative advantage. They have an advantage over others because they are now they became specialists in these in, in producing these type of products and they did it very well. This is why they are special. It doesn't mean that only Germany makes cars. Many other countries, many other uh, companies are available in other countries, but they, they have uh, a, a special um, a place in the minds of consumers. So now we are going to uh, explain the diamond model, which is Porter, uh, the Porter model. Uh, the, these are factors that affect each other. The structure of the firms and their, their competition, rivalry means competition. How they are structured, the companies and how they are uh, uh, competing. Uh, we also have the demand conditions. What kind of demand is there available? 
Do we have demand? Do we have customers who demand the product? Related and supporting industries. In order to start with the fashion industry, you need related industries like what? Like fabric, for example. Maybe you need schools that teach people how to design. OK, maybe you need um, factories that make buttons. All right, so all of these are related together. So you would see in a certain place, uh, مثلا, uh, a person goes to, to Paris to study fashion design. Oh, wow, this is great. Why? Because the industry itself over there is excellent. It has all the supporting industry and you have all the support around you to do this. Same thing for Germany producing cars. You have smart engineers, you have a certain infrastructure, you have other companies that are good suppliers for the car manufacturer and so on. All right, is it clear so far? So according to Porter, all the countries are characterized by differences in national values, culture, economic structures, institutions, and so on. So different countries have different abilities, right? They have different, because they have different cultures, different abilities, and they grow up with these cultures and ab abilities. Uh, changing those cultures and abilities will take time. It will take time and effort and money if you want to change uh, uh, some of these. Um, so Porter highlighted that the competitiveness of a country depends not only on the availability and quality of factor conditions, but also on. So if you want to become competitive as a country, uh, you need to have some demand conditions in that country. You need to have strategies, structure and rivalry of firms. You need to have the quality of related and supporting industries and infrastructures. So this is exactly what I have explained here. OK, it's the same, uh, the same points. All right, so we already gave examples, the clock industry in Switzerland, the car industry in uh, Germany, fashion. We said Paris, we could, you could also say Italy. All right, so uh, these are uh, some good examples. Competition is not only occurring among uh, uh, countries. Of course, it occurs among different organizations. So different organizations have um, a big competition between themselves. We have the five forces model. So have you, uh, are you familiar with this model? This is a very popular model. Are you familiar with it? Let me make it a bit bigger so you can see it. So here in the middle, we have industry competitors. Shiani industry, Kilmet industry, what does it mean? Al Qita, yes, Al Qita. Uh, so let's say Qita Sayarat, let's talk about Qita Sayarat. So the industry itself consists of not only one company, it consists of the competitors, it also consists of all the related businesses that support this industry. OK, so here in the middle, we have the industry competitors. So this block here doesn't have one organization only. It has many organizations. All of them are working within the same industry. You can say the restaurant industry. You can say the fashion industry. You can say the food and beverage industry and so on. All right. <clears throat> now, as per Porter's five forces model, it says that any organization inside this block here has five forces affecting it, okay, that keeps um, affecting its, uh, 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 its business. All right. First of all, the first force is within itself, yani from inside the industry, from the competitors, from um, the competitors themselves. This is a force that will force you sometimes to change what you do, to change the way you compete, to change your products. Competitors, of course, 
to change your pricing maybe. Okay, so this is the first force. Okay, so we need to count them. We have five forces. The model is called five, uh, the Porter's five forces. Okay, now the second force is the potential entrance. What does potential entrance mean? The newcomers, yes, the new competitors. Also, they will force you as the organization, they will force you to uh, change things. So, so this is another force. So now we have two. The third one, it's called substitutes. Okay, now a substitute for a car is a bus, is a train. It could be Uber or Kareem. Yani it could be uh, the, the share driving, uh, the, the shared uh, uh, driving. Okay, so these are threats to any company because they, yani threat to yani, tahdeed. OK, these are threats. So now we have three forces that are threats to the organization that is within any industry. OK, uh, that um, forms a threat. Now we also have other types of forces, which is the suppliers. In the suppliers case, we have what we call bargaining power of supplier. What does bargaining mean when you bargain for something? What are you doing? Trying to lower the you price. You negotiate. Yes, yes, tafawud, we negotiate. Okay, now sometimes the supplier is stronger than the company and sometimes the company is stronger than the supplier. So if I have a company and I want to buy from a supplier, can you imagine a scenario where I am stronger than my supplier? How can I be stronger than my supplier? In which cases? Excellent. Yes, when there is a few companies. OK, I'm stronger. I can put more terms. I can negotiate my 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 terms, right? However, when uh, there are when when it's vice versa, there are many organizations for one supplier. The supplier will become selective and they will tell you, oh, sorry, I cannot work with you this time. OK, I'm so full. I already have other other business to fulfill. So here comes this bargaining power of supplier. This is another force that affects the businesses. All right. Similarly, you want to think about it similarly with the buyers, with the customers. We also have bargaining power of buyers. OK, if I am a customer and I have 10 car brands for me to choose from, then I, I have power as a customer over the organization because the organization has so many com competition. If it's the other way around, if this is the only place where I can buy, or there are very few suppliers for the product that I need, then those suppliers can increase prices, they can increase their terms, they can do so many things to uh, make this relationship to their favor. Okay, so these are the five forces. Is it clear, the relationship here? So in any industry, we need to manage all these forces at the same time. We need to... Uh, uh, pay attention to these forces uh, in order to be successful. All right, so I have explained them all. Here you have more explanation. In, um, in the slides, I, I have explained them all, I, I believe. Okay. Any questions?